And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There's been a lot of deck building games out these days. It all started with the craze of Dominion, and then we saw Arctic Scavengers, and Thunderstone, and Ascension. And now we have a new one, and this one is Heroes of Graxia, which is kind of based on the, another board game called Guardians of Graxia. But Heroes of Graxia is a deck building card game, which is a little bit more in depth and allows you to attack other players. Is it any good? Let's look. Each player chooses one of the heroes, and all the heroes are different. Uh, at the beginning of the game, each hero comes with a plastic figure, and while the plastic figures are nice, they really don't have any bearing on the game. So, ooh, plastic figure. Okay, the card is what's important. And you'll notice that on the card, there's an attack value down here in the corner, and then over here is the defense value. Up here is how many hit points that hero has, and there's some special abilities listed on the card. A player is going to get a starting deck of 10 cards. The way the game will progress is each turn they will have draw five cards from that deck. They will be able to play those cards on their turn and then draw up to five at the end of their turn. When you play a card, you can place it in front of you or you can use it as money to buy more cards that are in the middle of the table. There's three basic kinds of cards that people will be at. One of them are units. You can see they look very similar to your hero. Uh, on your turn, one of your actions, you have two actions per turn, is to place another unit into your army. This will increase your overall total defense and total attack so that you can fight monsters or other players. Again, you'll notice that they have the same stats as your hero with two new things. Up here in the top is a price if you're going to buy that uh, card during the course of the game. That's how much it costs. And then there's a money value. If you're going to use this card as money only, that's how much that card is worth. And again, again these units will have special abilities. Some of them... Uh, our army units, you can put those in your army uh, as many as you want, but there's also henchmen which are more powerful, you can only have one of them and you can see this guy has victory points down here at the end of the game if he's in your deck then he's worth that many victory points so buying those and being able to play those is a handy thing. Another kind of card in your deck is equipment. There's three different kinds of equipment there are weapons, there are auras, and there are armor each equipment card can also be played as money and will add defense, maybe an attack, maybe it's even worth victory points like this one is. And each person can have one of each type. So you might have one aura, one weapon, and one armor. Although sometimes things change yet. For example, the dwarf here can carry two weapons. And again, that will change your overall attack and defense. And then the final thing are spells. And spells can be usually be played in combat when you're fighting something, and they'll add a special ability. This one adds three defense, and this one adds three attack. And so on your turn, you're drawing cards, building your army, and you might decide to go fight. In the middle of the table, and I didn't set this up for you to see, but there's four decks of cards. One is the equipment, one is the uh, units for the army, another is the spells, and there's four cards face up next to each. Those are the cards that you can buy from. But there's also four face-up monsters from a monster deck. And if you want to, as one of your actions, you can decide to attack them. You can see their hit points. You'll need at least that much attack. Uh, and how much they're going to attack you for. They're going to do that much damage to you unless you have enough defense to block it. So if you decide to, you can go fight a monster. When you fight a monster, you can use spells to fight a monster. You can also send in mercenary units. These are special units that can only be played in battle. Uh, they're, they're usually pretty powerful, but you don't get to keep them on the table. They go away at the, end of, at the end of the battle. Once you kill a monster, it will give you some kind of reward, and it's also worth a certain amount of victory points for having killed it. You can also decide to go after another player. You can take your army and go hunt down another player. And this is where, this is my main beef of the game, is keeping track of everyone's attack and defense. Uh, we found that writing them down for each player makes the game go a lot smoother and a lot quicker, uh, and so then you can attack that way, and you're basically comparing your attack to their defense, and they compare their attack to your defense, and each side will take wounds. Now, the game provides wound cards that come in denominations of 1, 2, 5, and 10. I really don't like these wound cards. I would much have preferred to use counters, because they're just a pain to work with these cards. Uh, but that's what's included in the game. And there's also cards that are prestige points that you get when you kill someone else's unit. So you don't want to lose a unit, because you'll lose prestige points, 
but if you kill someone else's hero or one of their units, you can do well. Now, if your hero's killed, don't worry, because you are able to come back in the game next turn with even a selected hand of cards, but it still does hurt to lose it. After the monster deck has been depleted during the course of the game, then the game's over. Players pound up any prestige points they got, any points they got for cards that they bought in their deck, and uh, whoever has the most points is the winner. I like Heroes of Graxia a lot. It's not the best deck building game. I still think Dominion holds the, the reign over that. And I must say that I even like Thunderstone better than Heroes of Graxia. But Heroes of Graxia does bring something to the table that the other deck building games don't, and that's direct conflict with another player. In fact, many times this really doesn't even feel like a deck building game, but more like a tactical, very light war game. And I like that. The biggest complaints are that adding up all the numbers for attack and defense can be kind of number crunchy. And it is kind of weird for some of these henchmen to be in the same army at the same time. It's not very thematic to have my, you know, tree ant coming and fighting your tree ant. Well, I mean, there's got to be, you know, are they the same guy? Is it a duplicate? I know, we run into that sort of thing in collectible card games also. But still, it's a pretty good game in a box. It has some really neat ideas. It's a little bit longer than other games. It takes about an hour or so to play. But if you're looking for something deeper, maybe with some more strategy, at least tactical battle attacking, and it has a really strong theme, then I would recommend Heroes of Graxia. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 